Hello everyone, back to you in today's second video, doing JMA Friday for today's second video. So, as always on a Friday, you've got your month ahead look here, but you're going to go through the JMA, the Japanese, and CFSB2 uh, long range. Well, I'll see what they're both showing for the next four weeks. I can say it's pretty much to the end of uh, July, so this is a July look ahead. Um, and I'll get on that for you very shortly. Just say that the gaps of this July forecast will be the first video up tomorrow. Uh, actually, I'll get that up for you as the first video uh, up tomorrow. Um, but uh, yeah, we're going to go through the JMA, and I'll have to go through CFSB2, and I'll we'll see what data is showing uh, for July in uh, in a moment. Uh, the first video released today was the European Outlook, so yes, the European Outlook is back on a Friday. Have a look at weather next week, 10 days across the whole of Europe in detail, so have a look at that. It's on YouTube, uh, that's a YouTube exclusive uh, video. And uh, also, uh, of course, we've got our 10 to 14 day video update with all regular features on the way this afternoon. Uh, right, let's get on a bit then. So we're going to start off with the 500 millibar height anomalies from the North Pole and uh, Arctic View down from the JMA. These are breaking out to weekly peers, by the way. Uh, so this is like the, the North Pole of the Arctic, Arctic just here. The wider Arctic Circle is uh, round there. And we've got the middle latitudes, of course, through here. So uh, yellow, orange and red extrapolate to blood above average heights and blue to below average heights, which is uh, low pressure. Uh, so these are going down to week periods. The first week period takes us from today, the 3rd through to the 10th of July. And uh, we look at a little... <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me, we're looking a bit zonal, a little bit westerly uh, with this one. Above average heights are to our south. Below average heights are to the north. And we're bringing in, uh, bringing in this uh, sort of westerly flow. So quite unsettled, particularly to the north, to the west of the country. Driest weather, not completely dry, but driest weather. Warmest weather will be down in the south with that one. Uh, week two takes us from the 10th to the 17th of July. And uh, this time we have below average heights centred over and to the east of the country. Above average heights pulled out into the middle of the Atlantic. And a trough over northeast parts of America. The jet stream does something a little bit like that. Very much a trough ridge type pattern. So we're on the cool side of the jet stream. We're close to a trough of low pressure. We would expect showers or longer spells of rain. And winds will be coming in from the north, west or north with that. So cool and showery really with the JMA for the 10th through to the 17th of July. Big month not looking great. And then we go through to weeks three and four, and I'm afraid it's not much better, really, again, with below average heights centred over and to the east of the country. Above average heights are pushed away to the north. The jet stream is doing something like that. So we're on the cool side of the jet stream, we're close to a trough of low pressure. Uh, if that's right, we're in for a really quite a cool and unsettled July, I'm afraid. That's not great at all from the JMA for weeks three and four into the second half of July. A very poor month, summer month, uh, on the way there. That is even a little bit of northern blocking as well that we've got up here. It's yellow up here, pushing the trough of the jet stream southwards. So, yeah, it's not great. It's not great, uh, that. It, it does look cool and unsettled for the second half of July. Uh, this tropical and middle latitude uh, view, so British Isles the top right hand corner of the chart as you're looking at it over there. A uh, reminder of the week one 500 millibar height anomaly, uh, taking us from the 3rd through to the 10th of uh, July. So we have the above average heights to our south, the below average heights up to the north. We look very flat and westerly uh, with that. Most of the south conditions in the northwest, dry conditions in the south. Uh, temperature anomalies are forecast to be below average with the JMA for the uh, week ahead. It's uh, cool of an average week coming up with those westerly winds. Most unsettled in the north and the west, where we have above average rainfall, driest, but not completely dry, but driest uh, in the south and in the southeast too. Uh, we go through to week three. Now, of course, we can't see the Arctic and uh, North Pole and Scandinavia and Greenland. That's very, that's off the chart up here. But we know that in week three, we've got the above average heights to our west, below average heights to the east. And winds are in from uh, a northerly direction. So, again, it's not going to be great, obviously, with the temperatures if winds are in from the northwest to north. So, another cool of an average week is being predicted here from the temperature to the 17th of July. And uh, precipitation is above average in the north, perhaps not as bad as might be expected in the south. I suppose some areas are a bit sheltered from those northerly winds. But uh, overall, it's slightly wetter than average for more northern parts of the country. 
And um, then week three and four doesn't get much better. So we can't see the Arctic view, but we know we've got some high pressure up here. We've got pinks of Northern blocking on the Arctic view with a trough of low pressure then centered right over top of the UK. Temperature anomalies continue to be cooler than average. If this is right, if Germany is right with this, uh, then this will be our first cooler than average month of the year. This will be the first cooler than average month that we've had since November uh, last year. So below average temperatures from the 17th to the 31st of July. Perhaps again, still not quite as unsettled as you might expect with a trough of low pressure part over top of the country. I would have thought it would be wetter than average as well. Rainfall is a bit above average for the north and near normal. Uh, for the south, but potentially it could get wetter than that, I think, if the trough is actually parked and centred right over top of the country. Remember, it's a two-weekly anomaly, so uh, it could be that something's going on, like by week four, we're finding some higher pressure getting going. Something like that could be happening. But overall, this does look like a cool and unsettled July uh, from the JMA this week. Right, let's have a look at CFSB2, see how that compares. Will it be as bad? We'll find out uh, right now. So this would be week one, 500 millibar high dominant from the CFSB2. Takes us from the 3rd to the 9th of July. The coming week with above average heights to ourselves and below average heights to the north. In come those westerly winds. So perfect agreement between the JMA and CFS for week one. They're both in agreement of having higher pressure to the south, lower pressure to the north. And so the most unsettled conditions will be in the north, the driest conditions will be in the south. And temperatures will be quite cool as winds are in from off the Atlantic. Big divergence for week two, though. Look at this. Now, at this point, the JMA has a trough of low pressure over to the east of the country with a ridge in the middle of the Atlantic. The CFS for week two from the 10th to the 16th of July places an area of high pressure over the top of the country with low pressure being pushed northwards. That should be going a lot drier and it should also be going warmer under that area of high pressure. So as early as week two, we have got a big split here this week again. And we have seen this quite a bit over the past few months. Actually, we've got a big split as early as week two from the JMA and the CFS, even though they are both starting off virtually identical uh, for week one. Week three uh, continues that split. Now remember, the JMA 500 millibar high dominant for weeks three and four is placing a trough of low pressure over the top of the country. Uh, but with the CFS from the 17th to the 23rd uh, of July, week three, again, we continue to have that high pressure centred over top of the UK and Northern Europe. Again, low pressure and the jet stream is going to get pushed off up here. And so we go dry and very warm as we move into week three, potentially proper summer conditions. Bit of a deterioration for week four, which is the 24th of July to 30th, as a high pressure begins to pull out into the middle of the Atlantic. Trough of low pressure appears to the north of Scotland, wind goes into the northwest, and so just, just generally turns cooler and more unsettled as we move into the last week of the month. But definitely weeks two and three, vastly more anticyclonic and thus drier and potentially warmer with the CFS compared to the JMA. Temperature anomalies with CFS V2 for week 1, 3rd to the 9th of July, below average. So both models are in agreement that the coming week is going to be pretty cool. Uh, probably not as warm of a temperature anomaly from the CFS for week uh, 2, as you might expect, if high pressure is taking over. This is the 10th to the 16th of July. Again, struggling with the temperature, still perhaps in team being a bit below average. Although we don't have to go very far to the south, and it goes very substantially hotter than average, and also to our east too. So it could be a bit transitional. It might speed up the... Th Early part of week two starts a bit cool, and then it starts getting readily hotter. Something like that could be going on. By the time you get through to week three, which is the 17th to the 23rd of July, then we're hinting at being uh, above average with temperatures, especially for England and Wales. Could actually be quite a hot week, maybe even hints of a bit of a heat wave there from the 17th to 23rd of July. Before things start to cool down again into week four as the high pressure pulls out into the Atlantic, 24th, 30th of July. Perhaps just cooling down, particularly for more northern parts of the country. And the week one rainfall anomaly from the 3rd to the 9th of July is wetter than average to our north. So, yes, again, wetter than average in the north week one. Uh, a little bit drier than average to the south. Week two goes drier than average for all areas. The 10th to the 16th of July goes drier than average everywhere. Uh, week three also hints at being drier than average from the 20th, 17th, 23rd of July. That one also hints at being 
on the dry land side. And then week four, which is 24th to 30th of July, reverts to the inner rainfall. Uh, but we'll probably be a little bit on the unsettled side if that trough of low pressure is coming back. So it's a confused picture. Now, for week one, we've got agreement between these two models. So for, for the next week, we're going to be westerly. It's going to be quite cool. Be most unsettled in the north. It'll be driest in the south, but not completely dry in the south. And we know that's the pattern that we've got coming up. We've talked about it in the videos a lot over the past uh, few days. Week two is when the split occurs. So the JMA for weeks two, three, and four looks cool and unsettled. And basically is a write-off of a July if the JMA comes off. A cool of an average month would be very probable on the JMA scenario. Our first cool of an average month since uh, November. And probably at times quite unsettled too, especially if that trough of low pressure gets parked over top of the country. The CFS is much drier, much more anticyclonic, and also a lot warmer, potentially anyway, though the temperature novels weren't that exciting, but but the CFS is potentially a lot warmer, a lot drier, and a lot more high pressure dominated through the, the middle two weeks of July, weeks two and three, before possibly going a bit more unsettled and cooler again towards month's end. So, so this is a very complicated forecast. We have seen uh, quite a lot of this between the JMA and the CFS over the past few months. You know, splits occurring between the two models from relatively early time frames. You do expect it a bit in weeks three and four, but you don't really expect it in week two when when they're both starting off identical for week one so so we'll have to wait and see uh where it's going this july is on a knife edge it could potentially turn out to be a very grim month i have to say if the jma is correct if the cfs is right though then uh we could potentially get some very uh some very uh nice summer weather through the middle two weeks of the month so we shall see and all will be revealed in uh in the next sort of um uh, week or so, I suppose. If you've been watching daily videos, you know that CFS has been very set on building up high pressure through the middle part of this July. It's something the CFS has been doing really quite consistently. Uh, so, so yes, and the CFS is sticking with that idea that the JMA looking very, very different. Remember, it's just a snapshot of what these models are showing today. They could both look very different next week. They could flip around, and it might be the JMA next week that's high pressure dominated, and the CFS is going towards lower pressure. We shall see, but but it's only a snapshot, and uh, and we'll do it all over again next Friday. Uh, but we've got our 10 to 14 day video update coming up. Will be signs of high pressure returning uh, on that one. You shall find out later on this afternoon. But for JMA Friday, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.